Welcome to the Reactor Prism tutorial video. In this introduction, we'll give you an overlook of this powerful new reactor instrument and a short glimpse into the basic principles of its underlying structure. To see how Prism works, let's have a closer look at modal synthesis. Physical instruments always have a resonating part like a string, a membrane, or a tube filled with air. The musician makes these parts oscillate by hitting them with his fingers or mallets or continuously exciting them with a bow or a stream of air. When a hammer hits a string, it starts oscillating not only in its full length, but also in fractions, creating overtones or higher frequencies. The mix of these so-called partials defines the character of the sound. Let's see what Prism does. The exciter, something like a hammer, produces an impulse signal which is fed into the modal bank, an array of up to 200 resonating filters. This causes the filters to start oscillating, creating partials just like in a piano string. Each of them adds up, defining the character of the resulting sound by their frequency, decay, and amplitude. For flexible sound shaping, we added a delay and mixer section, a chain of five effect processors, two feedback loops, two envelopes and polyphonic LFO, and a macro controller section with a second LFO. Now let's see where we find these elements on Prism's user interface. The exciter produces a short impulse, or an envelope-shaped noise signal, or a combination of both. The modal bank reacts to this signal. Let's start with one single partial. You hear a pure sine wave that decays. As we increase the number of partials, the sound gets more overtones, details, and brightness. You can easily vary the properties of the partials, like the decay times. the amplitudes, for example using a low pass. Or a comb filter. Bending the frequencies of the partials can change the sound radically. By setting them to non-harmonic values, you can get a strong metallic character. Using the exciter as a source of noise has a similar effect as the bowing of a string or the blowing of a flute. The exciter envelope can shape the sound from plucked or percussive to slowly developing. When you turn up the feedback, the output signals are mixed to the exciter signal and you get new sound colors or continuous feedback tones. In the lower part, you find five effects, which are powerful tools for sound design. Reactor Prism has numerous modulation sources, a second envelope, a source for velocity, two LFOs, and two macro controllers. These are just some of the many features of Reactor Prism running in the free Reactor 5 player. And if you own the full version of Reactor, you can dive even deeper into its structure and modify Reactor Prism, or combine it with other components. Or of course, you can even build your own synthesizer.